My friends tell me I'm torturing myself. It never gets easier. I thought I'd be used to it by now. That my heart would be calloused, hardened, immune to this torture. But it's not. It still hurts. First time you left, I thought it was a one time thing. Go after you, get you back. All is forgiven, all is forgotten. But each time it gets worse, it feels like death. My friends tell me I'm torturing myself. That it's not worth it, that you're not worth it, that I'm chasing a dream of what once was. How long can I love without it being returned? till death do us part. But what if your love for me was dead a long time ago? Even still, I still choose you. True love can't be explained. It defies sanity. It defies logic. love you without a record. I will forgive. I will pursue. I will bring you home. You cannot quench my love. You cannot outrun my love. You cannot escape my love. have a choice, but I still choose you. reminds you of Gomer in the Bible, doesn't it? Let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter number 18, verses 21 and 22. When you find it, uh, we're going to put it up there, but can we stand and read it together? The Bible says, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. I ask my wife to pray. Lord Jesus, yes, we just want to say thanks again, Lord God, for your word. Lord God, we ask today that you would give us the ears to hear what it is you have to say to us, O oh God. Help this word, O oh God, to penetrate our hearts, Lord God, and to remain there, Lord Jesus. That it might bring forth the fruit out of our lives, O oh God, that would please you. 
Please, Jesus, after we hear this word, oh God, don't let us just forget it, Lord God. But help us, oh God, to meditate upon it, to think about it, Lord God, and bring it back up. And even after we've heard it, Lord God, and hallelujah, meditated upon it, oh God, help us to be obedient to it and walk in the uh, uh, word that are pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah from it, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Send it forth today, oh God, with power to heal. Speak, Lord. To save, to set the captive free, to deliver, yes. Lord God. Hallelujah, and to Table. change our lives, uh -huh. Lord Jesus. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. And we would just want to speak to you a little while about forgiveness, God's healing balm. Forgiveness, God's healing balm. This scripture that we've read, you know, many of us have read it before many times, and, and it's talking about Peter. You know, this is, is, is found in the book of Matthew. Each, each one of the Gospels portrays Jesus from a dis different perspective. Uh, Matthew is known as the King's Gospel, often called the Lion's Gospel. Uh, Mark is known as the Servant's Gospel. Uh, Mark portrays him as being a servant uh, and often looked at as an ox. And then uh, Luke uh, portrays him as being 100% human, man. But then John turns around and portrays him as being 100% God. <laughs> and so each gospel uh, writing portrays him just from a different view as, as, as a king, as a servant, as all man, and as all God. And so uh, the, the, the kings in Matthew's uh, gospel, uh, Peter is, is now, he's the, the spokesman for the group. So many times we've seen him step forward and, and speak on behalf of uh, the other disciples and stretch out sometimes in things where they wouldn't stretch out. And so... Uh, when we read this scripture, many times we felt like, you know, here's Peter again trying to get off uh, easy, you know. Seven. If I, if I get, forgive him seven times, then can I go upside their head? <laughs> but, but, you know, I think that we get that backwards. Because if you stop and think about it, uh, after you've forgiven somebody two or three times, you ready to go upside their head. Uh, now, I, I believe Peter really was trying to be generous, y'all. Because seven is God's number of completion. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. Yeah. Uh, the seven is the number. Do, uh, do y'all agree with me on that? Yeah. Yeah, seven. That's that. So I think Peter was thinking, hey, I'm giving the whole number of completion here. I, I'm being very generous. Seven times, Jesus, somebody do something to me seven times, and I'm going to forgive them seven times. I, I think he was looking for Jesus to say, yes, Peter, you go, Peter. That's really good. And Jesus says, uh, well, really, Peter, uh, you need to forgive them 70 times seven. Now, I just imagine Peter starts scratching his head. <laughs> saying, well, 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 Lord, you know, how, how can you even keep up with that? And right there is the point, y'all. You shouldn't even be keeping up with it. You shouldn't even be counting. I think that's what Jesus was trying to tell him. And so seven times 70, that's 490. Okay, you're at 380. <laughs> I mean, who's going to count that far? Come on. You, after a while, you're going to lose count anyway. Jesus was basically saying, listen. If somebody wrongs you, don't even keep track. Don't even keep track. Somebody say forgive. forgive. Forgiveness is one of those things that is about as close to love as you can get. I, I think Jesus, you know, knows and he's kind of saying right here that um, if we consistently uh, forgive, we really free ourselves. Mm -hmm. when, when you don't forgive, what you do is you build a prison. You build a prison. You put that person in that prison. 
But the thing is, you got to stand there and make sure they stay in there. And so you the jailer. And so guess who's in the prison, y'all? That's what unforgiveness does to you. It imprisons you. The walls that you build up contain you, cause you to have grudges, bitterness. The Bible talks about a root of bitterness. It says, let no root of bitterness be in your heart. And I used to think about that. Why, why would he say a root of bitterness? It seemed like bitterness would be a fruit. But, but the thing about bitterness is a lot of times, don't nobody see it, y'all. It's deep down in your heart. She used to sing a song, deep, deep, deep down in my heart. Deep, deep, deep down in my heart. Do, do, deep. It's got bitterness, bitterness, <laughs> deep down in my heart, bitterness. All right, we're going to stop that. I don't want you to get that song in your spirit, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, if Jesus is deep down in there, bitterness not going to be down in there. So if you got a lot of grudges and a lot of bitterness and stuff, you need to check it. Praise the Lord. Praise Somebody the Lord. say forgiveness. forgiveness. It's interesting. The first place that the word forgive is used in the Bible is in Genesis 15 and 17. And that's the place, y'all, where uh, Jacob has died and they buried him. And all of his sons send somebody to Joseph saying, her dad said to forgive us. Before he died, he said, forgive us. And see, many of y'all might not know the story of what they did to Joseph, their little baby brother. How many of you got baby brothers? I had a baby sister. I didn't treat her too nice when we was kids. I used to put on a scary masks and scare her. She was like, ah! <laughs> She'd run around. I'd, I'd tell her, you better do what I say do. I, I, I bought a snake home one time, and boy, she was like, ah! <laughs> she going around. When I got the Holy Ghost, I had to go to her and, and repent. I said, I'm sorry for all the stuff I did to you. <laughs> she looked at me like I was crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> but sometimes we don't treat our little brothers and sisters like we should, do we? Yeah. Well, they didn't treat him very nice, but they went beyond just the little pranks you play and whatever, they threw this guy in a pit, y'all, yeah. and was talking about killing him. Now, how, how many of us had one of our brothers and sisters say, I'm going to kill you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Maybe I shouldn't have asked that. Maybe. <laughs> but they was for real, though. And, and they had really planned on doing it. Well, none of y'all, I, I know this, none of y'all have had your brothers and sisters sell you into slavery. I guess we did have some of that go on, too, back in the day. You, you, don't get it wrong, y'all. When they went over and got them slaves, uh, there was some selling going on. The brothers were selling the brothers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some of them tribes didn't get along. Some of them still don't get along. Just like we don't get along. Praise the Lord. And bitterness, bitterness, bitterness. They, they, they sold him into slavery and, and forgot about him. Put some blood on his coat, took it home, lied, and said an animal must have killed him. <laughs> Say, we don't know what happened to our brother. Then years later, uh, after he had been lied on again and thrown in prison, 
God elevates him and he becomes the second most powerful person in the nation, probably in the world. And then years later, when the famine is in the land and everybody has to come to him, and that dream that he had years before and said, I had a dream and all y'all came and bowed down before me. And that's why they want to kill him. Who do you think he is anyway? Tell somebody, be careful who you share your dream with. Everybody not happy about your dream, what God has shared with you, what he's going to do for you. A lot of people are jealous. And they, they don't want, they're not happy about your gift. They're not happy about your anointing. But it happened just like he dreamed it. They came and he saw them bow down before him because they needed some food. And he was the only one that had food. And uh, they was worried. And all this was over and. They knew that he wasn't going to do nothing to them as long as their daddy was alive. But as soon as daddy died, they felt like he's going to take us out now. He's going to remember how we did him. How many of us in here right now are thinking back to something one of your brothers or your sisters did to you when you was little? And you never have let it go. You never have let it go. You still think about it. And you still... Uh, Say to yourself, why did they do me like that? I don't know why they did me like that. I didn't do anything to them. I don't know why they, why would they treat me like that? Or maybe it was a friend. Somebody you thought was your, what do they call it? BFE? BFF. 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 <laughs> oh. I was thinking best friend ever, best friend forever, amen. <laughs> that, that one, though, that's the one I'm talking about. And then you find out they've been talking about you like a dog, just driving you down and just saying all kind of stuff about you. And, and you thought, you know, you thought you could trust them with your life. And then you start to having feelings. Bad feelings. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what about that person that you hooked up with when you fell in love with them? And you found out. I, I remember one time when I was in high school, I, I went over to this, my, my girlfriend's house, and I knocked on the door, and her mother came to the door. She said, come on in. And there was a guy sitting on the couch over there. She said, have a seat. <laughs> and she only had one daughter, so I, you know. I, I, <laughs> and, uh, and I was wondering where she is. She, she didn't want to come out because both of her guys were sitting on the couch. <laughs> I could hear her mother back in the back saying, go on out there. Go on out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody tell you they love you, don't love you. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all think y'all players. Watch out. The players get played. Amen. <laughs> but stuff like that can cause you to have bitterness if you let it. Amen. Amen. You know. So you look back on stuff when you're a child. After you get an adult, you laugh at it, you know. But when stuff like that happens after you're an adult, you don't laugh no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it, it hurts a little worse. You know. It hurts a little worse. Bitterness. Grudges. Probably some of the, the worst situations that have happened have happened with people that are the closest to you. The worst wars are civil wars where brothers are fighting against brothers. The worst cases in court are divorce cases where people who have been the closest now are battling each other. People who have said, till death do us part. And then something happens and a little bit of bitterness 
16. And it's a root. You let, stuff, you let that stuff grow. You let it, you let it fester. See, nothing, nothing happens to a seed until it's buried. But then when it's buried, things happen. It starts to grow. And, and there's certain seeds that it'll be months, years before anything ever pops up out of the ground. But underneath their roots are just going deeper and deeper and wider and spreading out. And then when it pops up, it looks like it's just a little thing. But underneath is a network. And the wider and deeper that network, the harder it is for that thing to be destroyed. That's why a lot of times people murder other people. You ain't see it coming. Well, where did that come from? But something happened. And it's spread out deep underground. And then just something click. It's like they go crazy. And then they destroy themselves and destroy a whole bunch of other people around them. Because they allow a root of bitterness. They refuse to deal with it. Now it's hard to deal with bitterness by yourself. I'll say that again. Very difficult to deal with bitterness by yourself. Sometimes, now I, I, I'm talking about, you know, you really need God to deal with that. You need God to deal with real bitterness. And then sometimes you need to go beyond that and get somebody to help you. Sometimes you need to talk about stuff. Amen. You need to get somebody and then just start, you know, telling them. You just can't get everybody now. Some people you don't need to be telling your, sp your stuff to. Your stuff be all over Facebook, Twitter. And <laughs> they be making a movie about you. <laughs> don't tell everybody your business. Amen. But, you know, you, you, you ought to be able to. I, I, believe, I believe I could tell my wife anything. Boy, y'all got quiet. <laughs> and I, I believe you could tell my wife anything. Because I, I know, you know, the kind of person she is. She's not, she not going to be spreading anybody's business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But to some people, the sooner you tell them, <laughs> it's going to be around the world <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> Because some, some people have an issue, y'all. We were talking about it in, in Sunday school this morning that we're all born in sin. Amen? Amen. All of us have a problem some kind of way. Yes. And some people, that's their problem, gossip. <laughs> y'all heard the story about the preachers who was out fishing? They was out fishing and they said, you know what? We, we, we really don't get a chance to let our hair down. You know, we can't tell the people in our congregation about what's going on in our lives. And say, let's, let's confide in one another. And they say, I said, okay. And he said, one of them said, well, my problem is, man, I like to gamble. I just can't help myself. I just, I just gamble all the time. And the other guy said, man, that's pretty bad. He said, man, but you know what? I got a pornography problem. And uh, nobody knows it but me. And he said, oh. So the third guy, he said, what's your problem? He said, I, I can't tell you. He said, we're not getting off this boat till you tell us. We told you what our problem is. The guy said, well, I gossip and I can't wait to get off this boat. <laughs> <laughs> Watch who you tell your problem to. You can't tell everybody your business. But you do need to deal with your bitterness. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Forgiveness is one of the most important subjects that we have to deal with in our lives, y'all. And uh, so Joseph, he, he had that thing down where he forgave his brothers. In fact, when they came to him, he was like, you know, really? And, and, he, and he made a statement that was powerful. He said, I know y'all meant it for bad. 
but God was in this thing from the beginning. You know? and, and that's the way you have to look at things, y'all. Sometimes, sometimes people are out of your life because it's time for them to be out of your life. Now, I ain't talking about y'all that's married. <laughs> Don't none of y'all married people jump up and say, okay, I'm out of here. I'm talking about these other relationships, praise the Lord, that just don't seem like they're working. And you're trying to make something work that ain't going to work. Once you get married, it's going to work. Because you stood before God. And what God puts together, boy, y'all getting real quiet up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a whole different situation. Praise the Lord. But, but some, some, other, some other things, you know, some other relationships, some friendships you have and, and uh, that are just not working, sometimes it's time to move on. Right. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. And sometimes by you not letting it move on, you're blocking something that God is trying to do better for you. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. So, so don't, don't be holding bitterness and stuff. Just like Joseph. The Bible says all things are working together for good mm-hmm. to those who love God and are, and are the called according to his purpose. I'm sure that Joseph didn't feel like being sold as a slave by his brothers. I, I, how can any good come out of this? I'm sure he felt like being lied on by his boss's wife and thrown in prison. How can any good come out of this? But the fact is... If, if those things hadn't happened, he never would have been to the place where he needed to be. Right. He wouldn't have been in Egypt if he hadn't been sold by his brother. Right. He wouldn't have met the people he needed to meet if he wasn't in prison at the time he was in prison. Right. If he hadn't met the baker and the butler, he never would have been at the position for the, the butler to say, Oh, Pharaoh, I met a guy in prison. It all was working, even though he couldn't understand it and the stuff that goes in your life. You don't understand it, but don't worry about it. God is in control. He always has been and always will be. God is not walking around heaven, wringing his hands, saying, oh, the devil's done it again. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that old devil. I just, uh. Let me show you the position of God. I wish I had a big throne in here I could sit on. He's sitting back on his throne in control of his universe and always has been and always will be. There's not a moment that he hadn't been in control. Praise the Lord. Now the Bible says that his ways are so much higher than our ways than the heavens are above the earth. So just because you don't understand what he's doing, don't mean he don't know what he's doing. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together and give him some praise in here. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Now the thing about it is if there were no offenses, there would be no need of forgiving. Amen? Amen. And so when, when you have need for forgiving, there, has, there means there has been a, an offense. Somebody has been offended. Now, it's interesting. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, uh, what does that scripture say? Thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Great peace have they that love thy law and nothing. You ever thought about that scripture? Great peace have they that love thy law, and almost nothing shall offend them. 99.9% of the stuff that happens won't offend them. Now, if I would ask right now, how many in here love God's law? How many love the Bible? Why his hands would pop up? Yeah, I love the word. Well, tell me about your level of peace right now. Tell me what it takes to be offended. Because some of us get offended because you think somebody didn't speak to you. 
Did you see them walk by me? And th they saw me. What's wrong with them? Who do they think they are anyway? We, we get offended over nothing. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, praise God, Brother Scott. Brother, I'm a bishop. What are you calling me, brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we let anything offend us. Yeah. Yes, sir. audience. Some of us don't need that. <laughs> we just get offended by ourselves. Have our own pity party by myself. Everybody else come. <laughs> but if you really love God's word, if you really love God, it's going to take a whole lot to offend you. A whole lot. People do stuff for you, to you, you know, you just automatically give them the benefit of the doubt. They didn't speak. You say, oh, they, they didn't see me. In fact, you running up to them trying to grab them. Hey, hey, you. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> they really didn't want to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do nothing but say, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> but you're not easily offended, not easily offended. You know, you know, people people like that look for things to offend, to get offended by. Yeah. They, they, they look for little things, you know, something, uh, something, they don't like me. That person's not even thinking about them. But you, you just search for things. But the Bible says, if you love God's law, you won't be easily offended. You know, we talk about David all the time, and the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart, but y'all remember the time when him and his men had watched Nabal's uh, flocks and whatever, and time for a harvest and time for, you know, the killing and all of that stuff the, with the lambs and everybody uh, celebrating and everything, and, and uh, David sent his men over to ask Nabal, you know, hey man, give us a couple of sandwiches over there. Nabal sent back, I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> David got offended, y'all. He got immediately offended. Now, this, this is the man after God's own heart. This is the sweet psalmist who played the harp and wrote songs about Jesus. Why y'all getting so quiet now? <laughs> yeah, he got offended, y'all. This was the one the prophet poured the oil on his head and said, you're going to be the next king. So some of us feel like, you know, God said I'm going to be king. I, I just sit back. Hey, do anything you want to do. I'm going to be king one day, you know. <laughs> Don't phase me at all. But how many know if you got a button, the devil will find it? He'll find it. Oh, he'll find it. And he found David's. <laughs> David said, okay, I don't get a sandwich. All of y'all dead. I'm killing everything up in here. Come on, boys. Get on your horses. <laughs> get your swords, your bows, and your arrows. We're going to kill everything. Thank God there was a wise woman. <laughs> Nabal might have been a fool, but he had a wise wife. I tell you. <laughs> Boy, she found out what was going on. Some one of her men came back and said, "We're in big trouble. We're in a heap of trouble over here. There's some angry men coming up here, gonna kill us all." She said, "Oh, my husband with his stupid stealth. She said, "Load up as much food as you can get." She got on her donkey, start riding toward her. all this food, and stopped him at the pass, and said, "Oh, we are so sorry. I, my husband a fool. That's what he is. But you can have all the food you want." And David, you know, and what she said, though, was powerful. She said, you know what? I, I know that that's what he deserves. But if you do that, it's going to put a mar, a scar on your, when you could get to be king, you're going to have this scar on you from you doing this. And a lot of times we do stuff, y'all, out of anger. We get offended and we get angry. And somebody said that anger like that is, is, is a form of insanity because we do stuff then that we'll be sorry for the rest of our lives and 
and, and we think back, why did I do that? Why? If I'd only just waited. But anger makes you do stuff now. But she came out and she told him, you know, you, 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 are you sure? You just, I don't think you really want to do this. And he got to thinking and he said, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Thank God for you. Because I was really about to mess up. I was really about to mess up. And uh, y'all know the story. <laughs> she got back and the next day she told her husband what happened. This guy was so stingy. He had a heart attack, y'all. He had a stroke. When she, <laughs> when she said, I gave them some food, he had, uh, he had the big one. <laughs> you remember, remember uh, Sanford and Son? Elizabeth, I'm like, <laughs> This guy was so stingy that just because she gave David some of the goods, the brother actually, he died, y'all. He died. He had a stroke or a heart attack or something. The Bible said he became like stone. And in and, uh, a few days, he was gone. And uh, guess who got all of his stuff? He, Abigail married David. And so it all belonged to Abigail. So look, David got everything. I'm telling you, your bitterness will ruin you. Your unforgiveness, your grudges will destroy you if you let them. But you know what? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't really uh, talk about forgiveness. You know, we talked about Joseph and how he forgave his brother. But glory to God. The greatest example of forgiveness in the world was when Jesus was hanging on that cross and looked at the people that hung him there. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. First thing that came out of his mouth. See, some of us would have been up there. I want my lawyer. <laughs> Where's this? This this just ain't right. I ain't did nothing. Get me off of here. The first thing he did. I mean, later on, he was even you know telling John, you know, take care of my mother. You know, he was saying other. But the first thing he said. Not the last thing, the first thing. Father, forgive them. That's the kind of forgiveness we need to have. Regardless of what anybody does to you, regardless of what anybody says about you or to you, I forgive you. Seven times, I forgive you. On that eighth time, I forgive you. Now, is that easy? It's probably easier for some than for others. But I tell you this, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. And, and you have to start somewhere, amen? amen? Now, some of us have a problem forgiving ourselves. Some of us Believe it or not, hold grudges against ourselves. How many know you have to learn how to forgive yourself? Amen. Listen, if God forgives you, who are you not to forgive you? You have to learn how to forgive yourself. And, and, I, and I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm, I, I, I need to stop, but I, God keeps faxing stuff. <laughs> Even... When you have forgiven somebody, guess what? It'll come back around again. Just because you forgave them one time, I'm talking about for the same thing. Yeah, that same thing. You, you forgave them, but it'll come back to you again. And so forgiveness is a continual thing. Because you, you can feel like, well, I forgave them. Back in 1958, 
But all of a sudden, it pops back in your mind. What are you doing with it when it pops back in your mind? Are you letting it go? Are you, are you thinking about that? You know what? They really did me wrong. <laughs> you have to continually forgive. You have to make in your mind that I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God. And that's what happens when you don't forgive. You separate yourself from the love of God. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, my Father cannot forgive you. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, stand up with me.